Here we are, solid moving platforms. Our last big step, and not nearly as big of a step as last episode was. Stick to the end of this one because we do a couple little, uh, a couple little tiny fixes for things. We iron out a couple little details. This is a very important one, so let's just get started. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> moving solid platforms. Here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna. I, mean, I don't need any of this garbage over here. We don't need any of that crap. So I'm gonna do what we did with our semi-solid moving platforms, and I'm gonna make an object called O Move Flat, and this is just gonna be the solid version of my moving wall. And maybe I'll uh, duplicate this sprite there, and I'm gonna make this move plat one just like a little bit, a uh, little bit darker. So it's obviously a moving one. Or, uh, let's do the yellows. This is what I did last time. I like that. Yeah, that's nice. That's a cute color. So the parent of our object move plat is going to be our regular object wall, obviously. Got our X speed and Y speed, which is good. I'm going to set this and I'm going to inherit this event. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste the code for my semi-solid moving platform just because I want it to do the same thing. So uh, I'm going to paste in this event, go to my semi-solid one and copy the begin step by right-clicking copy event and just pasting it in here. So the same thing same exact thing actually so i'm just gonna drop it in and uh see what we got see what happens hey it's me again your best friend future payton we spend so much time together these days just chiming back in to remind you now that you have an object move plat you need to add that check back in for where we were doing the Y snapping, this code block right here. Remember, you did not put this in because you didn't have a solid moving wall yet, but now you do. So you can put in this part of code right there. Ben, you can follow along with me and test this. Just keep watching the video. The behavior is gonna be a little bit weird and that's just because we haven't done anything with the solid moving platforms yet. So if you add in that line of code, don't expect that to make everything work, but your results should look like the result I'm about to show you. So let's get back to that. Okay, code looks fine. It's a solid object, so this, should work right here. Okay, great. So we're looking kind of okay, you know, uh, for the most part, there's a couple weird little things going on that, uh, that isn't happening with the semi-solid version. Well, is this enough to knock me off? It is. Uh, yeah, that's not happening here. So if I stand here, see the players like kind of shifting and moving around a little bit, doing some kind of weird stuff. And then you get the really weird stuff when you like jump into it while it's moving downwards because we get stuck in it when it's moving sideways, you know, freak out a little bit and we get stuck. So not good, it's not it's not really working. It is pushing us, but that's only because we're getting stuck in it for a second and then we pick up its X, B, and C. It doesn't even do it all the time, so not perfect. These are the types of issues you expect to see with moving solid platforms, right? That we don't have with the semi-solid platforms uh, for a couple different reasons. So basically, we just need to compensate uh, for all that stuff which is gonna be a little bit of code, but it's a very simple concept, especially compared to, to last uh, last time, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the tippy top of our player. And I, and I mean the top, like we're going before any other movement or anything. And up here, I'm gonna say, get out of solid move plats that have positioned themselves into the player in the begin step long comment, but that's what we're doing. And this is another reason why uh, this code only works with like block shaped solid platforms and things like that. And there's a couple other reasons some of the code, other code that we've done wouldn't work with them. But personally, here's the method that I've kind of decided to use for making sure that we're getting out of the walls, right? Because again, all of our moving platforms move in the begin step. So that way they're all on level playing ground whenever our player is trying to interact with them. So we're just gonna start doing it and I'll talk about it as we do it. So since we know all these walls are gonna be square, we are going to look for walls to our left, right above us and below us. So I'm gonna say var right wall equals no one. And we're just gonna start with the right wall because we're gonna repeat the process for uh, each one of them separately. But um, yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing because we're looking for walls that are touching us, right? Walls that have positioned themselves into us in the begin step. And when looking for the wall closest to our right, for example, just like we did with the floor platform stuff, we want to return the one that is the farthest to the left. <laughs> we're gonna make sure that it is to the right of us, but we're gonna get the closest one. So. Uh, we're gonna have to do what we've done many times before and create a DS list. Oopsie daisy. Create a DS list and then use instance place list. We're checking for a collision. Really, we're checking for a collision with any wall because technically all walls could, uh, could you know, move. They all have X speeds and Y speeds, but uh, it'll be a little bit more efficient to just check for moving platforms. And we can just make sure that anytime we make a moving platform object, you know, 
it's going to be the child of object moving platform, not just object wall. So that's just a, you know, a lot of this code probably isn't efficient at all. We do a lot of collision checks that could be cleaned up, but you know, mostly are separated for readability and things like that. But this is an instance where I can just say, yeah, it's very easy for us to just check for moving platforms instead of regular walls, but it, it would work with regular walls because they have the same properties. But anyways, we're going to set that equal to list size. Cause remember this returns the amount of object move plats. So we can very easily loop through all colliding move plats. Uh, and I'm gonna make sure that we get this all under the same little umbrella here. So for var i equals zero, as long as our i is less than our list size, we know all this, we've done it multiple times. We've got our loop set up. And just like last time, we can go ahead and uh, save our list instance like this by accessing a part of our DS list through this specific loop. So now we're gonna be looping through every single one of our colliding moving platforms and we have it stored here. So let's say if there are walls to the right of me, get the closest one. So like I said, first we need to check and make sure that there is a wall to the right of us. We're just checking for any collision with our player right now, which means that uh, for instance, this moving platform right here. It could be anywhere around here, you know, it doesn't matter. So it could be it could be right on us like this, but the way we're setting this up, the idea is that we'll detect this the moment it comes into contact with us, no matter what. So we're just gonna be checking, you know, this thing will say it has a speed of negative two, and it's been going this way. At the very beginning of the actual step event, it's not colliding, but once we run the begin step event, uh, we move two to the left, and now we're colliding with our player, which actually we probably aren't, but given this, but you know, now we're colliding with our player, right? And so what our player wants to do is check this object and, uh, you know, by compensating for its X speed. So again, we know that all moving platforms have already moved by the time our player is checking for them. So for each one, like for this one, for example, we can check for it and say, if this is place meeting our player, okay, now if I were to subtract the X speed it had, which would be subtracting minus two pixels, so plus two pixels again. Now we can check, was this thing to the right of us? So that's what we're gonna be doing. So basically if our uh, list instances bounding box left minus our list instances X speed, like I just explained. So we're just finding the left side of this thing. If that is greater than or equal to our bounding box right, and I'm just gonna do minus one to add a little uh, a little pad there then it will be eligible to return this as our right wall. And like I said, the reason I add that little pad is just because uh, it just helps with those little sub pixel collisions. But you know, it, the principle is if at the beginning of the step event, the left side of this box that we were colliding with was greater than or equal to the right side of our player, then we're all good. That means it should be able to be returned as a right wall. So, which means if we uh, have not already saved something as the right wall, so if right wall is still equal to no one, then we can set our right wall to be the list instance, right? Looking very similar to our floor platform stuff. Um, and so, if if there is already a right wall, then we can just compare it to a new one and say, um, if we either don't have a right wall, then set it to be our list instance. Or if we do have a right wall, yet we have another contender, now that we've gotten past this check, we can check if this new contender's left side is less than our current saved right walls left side, right? That that means that this thing is closer to us. Uh, oops, is closer to us to the left. Like for example, two of these bad boys coming right at you. And this top one has a speed of negative three. And the bottom one has a speed of negative five. So it'll be like one, two, three, that's touching the player. But one, two, three, four, five, that one's touching the player. And it should have pushed the player even farther than the top one. So that's why we need to check and keep overriding uh, whichever one is already the farthest to the left. Because we're just making sure that the frame before minus their X speed. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, they were in the, <laughs> they were in the same place. But but what the reality of the game is right now is they actually look like this. So if this one's farther to the left and that means it was moving faster and it's farther pushed into the player. So cool, easy stuff. And so then after that, we are done with our list. So destroy the DS list to free memory. So DS list, destroy, destroy our list. That's important. And then lastly, we can get out of the walls and this can be the can do the, oh boy, the right wall first. So if instance exists, right wall, then that means that there was a wall that collided to us and it met all of our conditions and it's a wall that we need to get out of. And the way I've gone about that is like this. So I'm gonna make a local variable called var 
right distance. And uh, this is going to be the distance between my bounding box right and uh, my origin point for my X. So we're basically we're finding, as far as our, our player is concerned, we're finding like uh, this distance right here. That amount of pixels right there. Because we're gonna do this. And I've just found that this makes it look incredibly smooth. So we're just gonna set our X position to be the right walls bounding box left minus my right distance like that. So we've got a wall that runs into us like this, right? We know we've run into it. So we're taking this little distance because our origin point's about right here and the side of our mask is about right here. We're taking this distance, which is about maybe six pixels or so, something like that. And we're just saying, all right, take my X position and and I'm gonna set it to six pixels to the left of the left side of this wall, which will like super precisely get me right here, very precisely right up to it. There's other things you could do. Uh, you could probably also just add the X speed of this uh, right wall to the player, but uh, it looks a little bit, it looks a little bit choppier. I don't know, something about it just doesn't do quite as well, I think, as uh, this, which feels very smooth to me. So anyways, we're gonna test this out. I've already changed the code to this to do what we did last time, which is I got rid of the Y speed and set it to zero. So this solid moving platform will just go, uh, will just move left and right. So uh, oop, let's see, let's run the game. Look at that, look at that right there. And if I, I run into it, like I'm holding the right button, trying to run directly into it and uh, we're never getting stuck in the wall. I can do this all I want. Perfect, perfect. This also avoids us having to do any more of those like tiny little sub pixel precise collisions and things like that. In this instance, I feel like this makes the most sense. And maybe, you know, this is something that I figured out a little bit later. So um, maybe even doing something like this makes sense for other things. It probably doesn't for slopes and stuff like that. You know, that that is the difference. You know, again, we're talking about, we know that these moving platforms like this are all gonna be square. So we don't have to worry about things like, you know, if, if they were sloped or anything like that. So yeah, but that's the principle. And we're just gonna do that for, uh, we're just gonna do that for all the directions. So we can do left next i'm gonna call this section find closest walls in each direction and i'm gonna change this one to right walls and so now we can do the left so i can just go up here add left wall up here and then do left walls right here and left walls are going to be the opposite of what we did up here right so if we're checking for walls to the left we need to make sure our list instances bounding box right so the right side of that box minus it's a uh, you know it's x speed so again compensating and returning it to where it was at the beginning of the step event as long as that is less than or equal to the left side of our player again i'm just going to add one pixel just for a little bit of a little bit of a pad there there for any weird subpixel stuff. Uh, if both of these are true, then that means that our list instance can be a candidate for our left wall. So if we don't have a left wall already set, right? Not instance exists left wall, then we want to set our left wall to be our list instance, right? And then much like we did up here, we want to return the closest wall to us, right? And so that would mean if our list instances right side is uh, greater than our current left walls right side right so that'll give us our left wall it's just the opposite basically of the right one and then we're just going to do the same thing down here so so if we have a left wall then we're going to do we're going to find the left uh distance of our bounding box so i'm just going to keep it a positive number you know so i know that the bounding box left for my player is going to be to the left of my x origin point so i'm just going to do x minus my bounding box left and then hard set my X to the right side of my left wall that's touching me, that's pushing me towards the right, plus that little left distance. So again, that'll, you know, it's just basically the same exact principle. As I've said many, many times, don't do any copy and pasting for this kind of stuff. But yeah, so we're checking for one to the left. If it moves in, we're taking this distance here and we're saying, okay, set my X position to the bounding box right of this, which would be doing this, but then it's saying add in the distance to our collision mask. So it would move our player to that nice little spot right there and we can test that real quick should work let's see oh yeah yep 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 that's some good stuff right there great so left side's working so let's do another one i'm going to now add the uh the bottom wall so the wall that is below us we call it below wall whatever bottom wall it's going to be the same principle so we're gonna say if the top of this object, right? Because we're looking for the wall below us, checking for the bounding box top, this part right here. 
And remember, we need to compensate for these coordinates. So this time we need to subtract its Y speed. It's a Y position, right? So if it's bounding box top minus its Y speed is greater than or equal to our bounding box bottom minus one again for the for just a little bit of padding so we're just making sure that it, it's under us or close enough to be considered under us then if we don't have a bottom wall set our bottom wall to be our list instance or this instance's bounding box top is less than our bottom walls bounding box top then we can set it and now we can get out of the bottom wall then we'll do the same thing i'm going to make a variable called bottom distance and that's going to be our y position minus our bounding box top which our Y position, if you've been following very closely, is at the bottom of our collision mask. So that's gonna be this big distance here, but uh, I've, I've done this in a way where it should work no matter where your origin point is, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to test that out again. But uh, so that'll be this big distance, and we're just going to set our y coordinate to be, to be our um, top of our bottom wall minus that bottom distance. Now, for the most part, our my floor platform stuff uh, covers a lot of this, which is the wall below us. But you saw that there was a couple little oddities, like the weird slight little sliding that we were doing when going around in circles on this thing, and that was just a product of that. So I'm gonna reset this to be the full spinny version and test really quick. Oh, wait, hold on. I might've done something wrong. Let me check. I definitely did something wrong. Oh, right. That was dumb. Uh, sorry. I was thinking weird. The distance that we actually want to have from dis the distance of our bottom wall is uh, the space between our origin point and the bottom of our collision mask. Right. We don't want to, we don't want to pop up that much. So that needs to be changed here. And that would need to be a uh, bounding box bottom minus our Y coordinate, right? Because for instance, if our origin was, you know, more centered like this, so our origin was up here, we want to find this positive distance. So the bounding box bottom minus our Y. So that'll give us this space. And then we'll be set to the top of that object minus that amount. So uh, I'm going to set this back to normal for a second, and then I'll test that and show you that it should be fine. Now, I know I mentioned this in the beginning of the series, but uh, I'm just reiterating here. Currently, this system only works if the origin point for your player, its Y coordinate matches up with the bottom of the collision mask, like you have seen with my player the whole time. Again, I showed you this in the beginning, and I, I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, this code would, pr would work fine with it. In fact, if we put it in the game right now, it'll just look a little jittery. It won't look smooth. But uh, part of that reason is because we do things like whenever we snap our Y coordinate to the uh, the top of a wall, for instance, like our floor platform, uh, we're just we're just setting the Y coordinate to be the bounding box top of that wall, which uh, we would have to go back and basically add a compensation for that distance, which could be easily done. But unfortunately, I just didn't do it and didn't think about it. But I will say it's incredibly common to see the origin point of your sprites in a 2D game like this to be at the bottom where the uh, origin of their sprite is at the actual like bottom of the bounding box. So that's probably what you're going to be doing anyways. Yeah, anyways, just wanted to mention that. Maybe I'll cover it in an extra little video at the end of this series. Don't know. Uh, I think that should that should be right. My brain is so fried today. You guys have no idea. Uh, so, yep. See, now we don't have any of that weird little uh, little kind of slight sliding that we were doing before once we were kind of going upwards on this uh, this circular motion. So great. Now the last thing to do is to do this one so we don't get stuck inside of the wall like that. Last one for our top wall equals no one. We're gonna get our top wall in the loop. So we get the bottom of this minus its Y speed to compensate. We're gonna say if the bottom of this thing is less than or equal to the top of the player, plus the pad and uh i mean uh, so this pad uh, what i've been doing is a, it's a pad inwards to make so it's one pixel to the left of the right of the bounding box wow that was annoying to say i'm gonna try and think of a different uh way to say that we're taking the right side of our player but we're moving it in a pixel so we're going to the left one and then if we're checking the left of our player we want to move that in a pixel so we move it to the right etc etc so anyways, that's, that's what the pads are. And this is the same exact code, basically. If we don't have a top wall, now we've got one. And if we already have one, but the new list instance is farther downwards, which would make its uh, bounding box bottom greater than the bounding box bottom of, of our top wall, then we have a new top wall. Same principle. 
and then top wall and this one it's just gonna be ever so slightly different it doesn't need to be so don't worry there's nothing you're missing if you thought that it was supposed to be the same it would work if it was exactly the same but the final video that we're going to do in this series before it branches off into mario likes or, or uh, metroid types or whatever the castlevania is hollow knight who knows all three things i just listed were the same genre but we're just going to do one thing to help out the the crouching function and we're just going to go ahead and do it so because i'm sure you've you're you know it, it's basically the same so we're going to do up distance uh and this one is going to be our y position minus our bounding box top and uh essentially we're not going to set our y exactly to this coordinate yet first we're just going to save that in a target y but this is basically where we're going to try and be moving so it's the same exact principle so where we're trying to move is the top walls bounding box bottom plus our uh up distance or i should have named that top distance but you know it doesn't matter same thing right if it's if the walls coming down to hit us in the brains we're like oh okay so hitting us in the brains we're like oh okay i see so i need to set my y coordinate to the bounding box bottom of this first and then you know plus the height of my collision mask which will get me here same principle i just felt like showing it again because i feel like the repetitive nature of what we've been doing might make it easy to suddenly be like wait a minute i'm not thinking about this properly so yeah so that's where we're trying to move and basically we're just going to do a little pseudo collision here just check if there isn't a wall in the way so if there's not a place meeting uh, of our x position and where we're trying to go so our target y position with a solid wall then now we can set our y to our target y and i'm just going to say includes collision for and i'm going to say for polish and crouching features and uh, i'll explain to you why i also say this is polish at the same time so but yeah that that should do it so let's just try it out that's incorrect what did i do this time did one of you see what i did and then you made fun of me when i was doing it oh right uh if not if there's not a top wall a single little exclamation point whole game crashes <laughs> crazy Oh, my mic stand fell. What was I saying? Oh, good. Yeah, we just fixed this. So let's test it again. Fun gaming. Looky there. Oh, and you see, okay. So my player got stopped there for a second, but that's because my player actually got crushed right there. And that's why I said polish, right? My player is getting crushed right there and I can't move, but it's not pushing me down into the wall, which uh, part of the reason this helps for the crouching feature is because uh, I'm going to show you how to do an automatic crouch where if your player detects that that's going to happen, they will crouch on their own. So therefore you don't want the player to be pushed down into a wall. So yeah, looking Yep. I'm not getting caught in this at all. It's just working. Look at this. Look at that, that's a video game. Are you kidding me? Are you joking right now? That's a video game. So uh, let's test a couple other things really quick. We're not done, by the way. Don't click off this video. There's one more thing I wanna show you that's, uh, that's important. Like I said, we're doing crouching next time, but there's one little detail which I wanna show you right now. Maybe you've already noticed, but I'm gonna make a new moving platform thing that's much simpler. So I'm going to create an object. Oh, simple move plat. This is just gonna move left and right. And if it hits a wall, it's gonna reverse its speed. So I'm gonna make it the same sprite as this thing. Its parent is going to be O move plat, right? That's what we need. And it's just gonna do its own thing a little bit. I'm gonna set a speed variable and I'm gonna to set it to a kind of high number. So I'm gonna say like five. And then I'm gonna override this event and Oh, and I'm gonna set uh, X speed to zero and Y speed to be zero. No, 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 no. X speed is gonna be set to my speed and my Y speed is gonna be zero. Um, and I'm gonna say if place meeting X plus X speed with another solid wall, then I'm going to reverse my X speed by multiplying it times negative one. And then other than that, I'm just going to add to my X speed. So let's see, that, that's what this will look like. I'm gonna get these guys out of the way. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> All these guys out of the way. I'm going to put some walls down here for this to run into. And I'm going to make this pretty tall so I can uh, I can stand on it and you know, whatever. This thing's gonna be going pretty fast. So let's see. Okay, yeah, so just going back and forth. Um, I get pushed fine no matter how it's going really fast, but it's still working fine. It pushed me into a wall. Gaming! Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, so I'm on this thing now, right? It's going pretty fast. This is going to be kind of hard to look at, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot to the very edge of this moving platform and watch what happens. 
Oh, you see. So if you could kind of tell, I fell off kind of early and maybe it might actually be a little bit better to demonstrate with a slightly slower speed. So maybe just speed of two, but okay. So maybe, so I'm going to move close to the edge here. Oh, and you saw I fell off when I got to the edge there, right? I was standing on it. I didn't move at all, but I fall off. So what the heck? What's up with that, right? I'm going to put myself here. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. You, you get the idea, right? Uh, why did that happen? Because this, my good friend, remember our moving platforms move at the begin step event, right? Not the step event. So that means that if my player is standing here and they're both moving to the right, what's happening is this. Move two pixels to the right, and then my player ultimately sees that they're standing on this, they go, oh, I'm gonna move two pixels to the right also. That's why going this direction, I could stand like this. However, whenever it went the other way, what was happening was this. This is like, I'm gonna go two pixels to the left. Now my player doesn't know it's there anymore. So my player fall down. So that's what's happening. And you can see at higher speeds, which, you know, probably not gonna set your speed super high, but if your speed was at like six, five or six, which again, uh, very high, but maybe you have a really high resolution game. So six pixels at once isn't really that fast for your game. Um, that would be like, you could stand on this thing and it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's way out of the way now and the player's not gonna follow it. So here's an easy, easy, little simple solution for that let's go back into our player and go under oh so crowded so crowded we are so zoomed in this text is i hate it <laughs> okay so we've gotten out of our solid moving platforms and i'm going to region this out because it's just this big old thing region and region down there then we can do this oh there we go i'm gonna make a section called don't get left behind by my Move plat, mo plat, by my move plat, my moving platform. This is very easy. I can say if I have a floor platform, which, you know, this is only going to be an issue whenever we're standing on top of a uh, moving platform, right? So that moving platform will be returned as our move plat or as our uh, floor platform. So if we have a floor platform and we can go ahead and say uh, if our floor platform's X speed is not equal to zero. So if it is moving horizontally and lastly, we can check if we're no longer touching it anymore. Like I said, you know, if we're basically checking to see if this thing moved out from under us, you know, if this thing's speed is negative two, it goes like that and now it's no longer under us so um i'm gonna say if there's uh sorry not a place meeting with our x position and you know we're gonna say our y plus our move plat maximum y speed uh i guess plus one for another for more padding it doesn't matter really this number doesn't matter um this just needs to be a high number this number just needs to be higher than the fastest the player can fall or higher than the fastest a moving platform can move because remember um our moving platforms also move like this if this was a downwards moving platform and it was standing on top of the player uh it'll also move like this before the player has time to snap back down to it so we don't just want to check if it's not directly below us we need to make sure that it moved away from us in that direction or it's within our range of speed moving downward so our maximum moving platform y speed so basically, uh, if all these conditions are true, this means we were left behind by a platform that scooted out from under us to the left or to the right. We can say, go ahead and move ourselves back onto that platform if there is no wall in the way. So there's not a place meeting. Uh, the way to get ourselves back onto our platform in the exact same position we were in is to just add our floor platforms x speed to our uh, current x position we're checking for our y in the same place and we're just making sure there's not a solid wall in the way then if that's the case then we can just add the x speed there so basically what we're doing here is we are uh we are adding our move plat x speed early, right? Remember, we we solve what our moving platform x speed is going to be at the very bottom of the step event here, so we can move with our moving platform. Um, but this is in case we get left behind. So basically, we're doing this early. So what we want to do is we don't want to accidentally double up on this x speed anymore. We've already we've already basically done our x speed movement just early. So I'm gonna go to my create event, go down to moving platforms, and I'm gonna add something called early move move plat x speed and set that equal to false and this will just be a boolean a true or false that tells us if we did our moving plat x speed early so in our step event if we did this i can say yeah let's set this to true and uh, you know by default we can go above this and set it to false so by default it's false 
But if we do have a f moving platform, it moved out from under us and then we followed it this way, then we can say, yeah, that's true. So we can actually just go to the very bottom where we uh, do our moving X speed and we can say, if we didn't do our X moving X speed already, let's just ignore this block of code here. We don't need to actually move because we already did a basic collision up there and we already moved. It's just such a very specific little instance uh, worth of worth of smoothing and polish. It's, a, it's really not that important, but I just feel like it's a good, it's a good thing to have. So we can try that out. I'm gonna set my character's walking speed to be like 0.25 very very slow so that way uh i can make sure i get right up to the edge there right up to the edge and my platform like my well here we go okay so it is a it, it isn't like perfect i think maybe by like one pixel it uh maybe by, by like a single pixel it's not perfect but you can see we can get way closer uh, also, the, the bounding box for my player is not as specific. In fact, I'm going to do this really quick just so we can look at it. I'm going to add yellow. And it was all yellow. Remember that guy who sang that? How old are you? Um, yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to put this square here so we know exactly where my uh, bounding box actually is. So here it is. Basically right at the edge. Basically right at the edge. There we go. So yeah, it's, it's probably about a pixel. Okay, so really quick, uh, I changed the code on this moving platform a little bit. Uh, it was a little too rough, a little too fast. So instead of uh, just swapping the X speed every time there was a collision, I made a direction variable that was just one and it swaps between one and negative one. I set my X speed and then when there is a collision, I changed the direction, but also I set the X speed to zero for a single frame. Uh, that basically just gives all the logic time to catch up. This was a little too simple, a little bit too crude of a uh, of a moving platform, which it still kind of is, but um, yeah. So uh, I didn't change anything about about this code it looks a little bit different but it's just because i turned this into a local variable <laughs> like that oops we definitely need that to be there but uh this is the same code otherwise and that'll make this a little bit easier to show you okay let's see there we go there we go so we can get very very close to the edge on this it's a hard thing to test because you have to test it at you know like high speed see that didn't that didn't feel right there we go look at that right there pretty close to the edge and if we didn't have this code so i'm just going to take out the actual movement part let's see if i can get back that close to the edge no nope, fell off right there right there hold on come on now yeah it keep so fall off a lot easier at the end of this one yeah, can't get can't get close to the end at all. Again, this is a very fast moving platform. You're probably not going to have it like this. Platforms at a uh, lower moving speeds aren't going to be that noticeable, but um, it just helps to to round it out a little bit. Yeah, that was all. That that was it. But that was one little bit of rounding out. That's all well and good. If I change this thing's speed back to back to just two. Yeah, we get right on the edge there. That's good. It's good. Plus, when it comes to running and stuff like that, um, it helps that we have all the coyote timer and stuff like that. So it should work. But yeah, that's that's the deal. And I said one last thing last time, but I lied to you. There's one more last thing. Uh, where is it? One more last thing. Remember when going up into a solid wall with a semi-solid platform, our player would be forced to fall down it, which is great. However, let's look at the opposite scenario. So I got a semi-solid wall right here and I got this moving platform, which I'm gonna tell it to just move up and down. And let's see what happens there. Will it work? No, it doesn't. We get stuck in it. It crushes us. So really quick, let's just add some code to uh, add that functionality in. My eyes are starting to cross, folks. Let me tell you. So we're going to go down to the part where we uh, did that code I was talking about, where we get pushed down right here, right freaking here, at the very bottom. We're going to add some code below this and say, this is get pushed down through a semi-solid by a moving solid platform. So as always, first we need to check if there actually is a wall that we're standing on that we need to get uh, pushed through and if it is a semi-solid wall. And at this point, we've checked for both of these things independently a lot of times. We probably could replace both of these checks with like local variables at some point. Uh, maybe we'll do that at the end of the series. Maybe I'll leave the optimization to you. It's a little challenge to you. But when it comes to actually doing the logic of this, I want it to be clear what we're doing each time. So 
I don't just want to look at a whole bunch of local variables and stuff like that. So we need to make sure that there is a floor that we're standing on and that it is a semi-solid wall. Make sure your parentheses are right like this. This has to be one thing in all of these because we're just looking to make sure either this or this is true. So they have to be together. And I'm going to add uh, another line because we also want to make sure that we are inside of a wall right now, right? That a wall has moved into us. So here's how we're going to do this. We're just going to say if I'm already starting stuck in a wall at this point, try and move me down to get below a semi-solid. Then we'll say, if I'm still stuck afterwards, that just means I've been properly crushed. It's gonna be a lot of comments, but uh, I like to be specific on this stuff. So we really know what we're doing. So we also wanna say, also don't check too far. We don't want to warp below walls. So I'm gonna make a variable called max push distance. And I'm gonna set that to let's say 10. And I'll talk about that in a second. We're gonna make a local variable called pushed distance. So this is gonna be how far we've actually checked. Cause like I said, we're just gonna keep checking until we're either out of a wall or we wanna you know, exit once we've already checked check 10 pixels. We don't wanna check any farther than that. And so then I'm gonna make a very variable, local variable called start y for a reference point. And that's going to be our y position. That's where we're gonna start. So let's do a loop. Let's say while there is a place meeting with x, y object wall. So while we are in this object wall, which we are hoping is going to be a moving platform that is uh, you know above us trying to push us downwards. So while that's true, and while our pushed distance is less than or equal to our maximum push distance, then we're actually going to move our actual y coordinate downwards as well as uh, tracking our pushed distance right so in that circumstance where our player was standing here like this and this thing was coming down say it was coming down and it came in here we're going to physically push our player down so that we'll no longer be you know above this semi-solid platform in which case our player will forget about it and then we can uh set our on ground to be false right so that way we forget our floor platform and we shouldn't be on the ground anymore theoretically so what'll happen let's go to the room so what'll happen back in this scenario if our player is standing here and this thing is coming down we'll physically push ourselves down and forget our floor platform and now that our player has been pushed below the semi-solid platform uh the player will just continue to fall through and naturally be pushed down through this uh, through that, you know, code that we did at the beginning of the video, at the very beginning of our step events. So let's see what that does. Look at that. Pushes us right out of there. Great. And that can also give us kind of silly looking results. So this might do it. I hope it does. Uh, let's watch this. Let's watch the player. Let's see. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting crushed and we're acting a little weird, but that's not what I was talking about. Let's try this. Let's see if, uh, let's see if this works. Yeah, okay. So that like little warp. Uh, that's because what happened was our player was standing on top of this. So our player was like, okay, let's push me down and you know, we'll check a maximum of 10 pixels. We don't want to go any farther because for example, let's say our wall was shaped like this and this wall was down here, right? Let's, let's look at that really quick before we talk about anything else. Dude, okay, same thing. If we did a really high number, basically a number that was taller than our character's bounding box, then we could keep checking down until we're not touching a wall anymore, and it could warp our player all the way down here. So like, for example, um, if I just said while place meeting this, and I didn't have this maximum distance, so uh, if I just got rid of all this stuff, so it basically just says, well, as long as I'm getting pushed by a wall, I should get pushed down. Uh, this is what happens. Boop. Oh, yeah, and we, we don't want that. So that's why we do that. And that's why we set our max push distance to a number like 10. Basically, the fastest a move plat should be able to move downwards. Um, so, you know, this is the farthest a moving platform can push the player down in order to check for walls, right? And I think 10 is a very good number because 10 is super fast. But just remember the important thing is, and you want to also include things like if your player has a crouching hitbox, right? Like uh, half of my character's hitbox is less than 32 pixels, but it's around like maybe 30. And the crouching hitbox is maybe around like 14 pixels tall or something like that, you know, only half the size. So I wouldn't want this to be above the kind of maximum uh, size that the player could be at, but uh, my player will never be 10 pixels tall as far as the hitbox goes. That's very, very small. And uh, 10 is a very, very fast speed for a moving platform to move at.
trust me. So, but uh, if you need to make it higher, again, if you have a higher resolution game, that totally works. Just make sure it isn't taller than the uh, the shortest your player's hitbox can be. And uh, if we want to fix that sort of weird little popping into the ground like that, uh, we can do this. I'm going to say, this is uh, forget my floor plat. That's important to label that. And the last thing is, if I'm still in a wall at this point, I've been crushed regardless. Take me back to my start. Why to avoid the funk is what I will call it. So uh, I'm just going to say, um, we know we're still in a wall, basically, if my push, oops, See Daisy, if my pushed distance is greater than our uh, maximum pushed uh, push distance, right? If this number got greater than this number, it means that the loop fully played out, which means that we were still in a wall by the time we gave up. So we can just set our Y back to our start Y like this. So now that situation looks like this. Well, yeah, I got crushed. Oh, which is funny because the player still like forgets the uh, the floor wall, which if we didn't want the player to do this, I guess instead of setting on ground to be false, we could uh, we could keep on ground to be true, but we could just say my floor platform equals false and that'll probably, yeah, that'll that'll stop it. Um, really the important thing there is um, we just want the player to forget our uh, semi-solid platform right here, which we could theoretically also just use, you know, our variable that we have called forget my semi-solid platform. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of options here for a lot of things, but yeah. So, and the reason this is nice, this crushing, because again, this'll, uh, this'll work with our automatic crouching code that we'll talk about next time. Hello, it's me again. Just another thing I sort of realized post-mortem pretty late into the editing process. I was suddenly struck with the idea that, you know what, I don't think this code is needed anymore after this code, because I made it in the order that I showed you guys in the video, which is I made this one first, which was necessary, uh, and then this fixed another problem. However, this actually just, uh, this piece of code right here, actually, as far as I can tell, as far as my quick little bit of testing has done, uh, makes this entire bit of code right here totally redundant. So again, this is the code for if you are getting pushed upwards by a semi-solid platform and you're getting pushed into a solid wall ceiling. Uh, again, I, in the video, I probably noted that this wouldn't remain necessary, but uh, I'm just gonna comment it out like this and just show you that really quick. Okay, so here, yep, look at that. So uh, this pushed us out of the ceiling and we never flashed blue, which means we never are getting stuck in the wall. So my thought was seemingly correct that that did make that code redundant, which is good. Uh, anytime you have redundant code, well, it's not good that I uh, put in redundant code in the first place, but it's good that we can essentially just cut out some code. So you can leave it here and just type it out and say made made redundant by code block below or something like that. And uh, this is what I like to do. If I ever want to save something for some reason, go back and look at it or just to make sure. Like I said, I did test this out and it seemingly is pretty good. But uh, if you're noticing anything kind of weird with it, which I didn't, then you can put this code back in if, uh, if it, that weird thing wasn't happening. But as far as I'm concerned, this should absolutely overwrite any need for this code. So if you want to take it out, you can. If you want to leave it, comment it out, you can like this. So yeah, all right, continue on. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for this one. Boy, howdy, looking good. I'm gonna fix my player's movement speed because 0.25 is driving me absolutely insane. So crushed, yep, nice and crushed. Here we go, I get pushed through one of those. I get pushed through that. This thing can't do nothing to me. So yeah, feeling uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about all this, right? Look at that. Look at all this crazy moving platform movement and we're just colliding and wow. Uh, yeah, so that picks me up. That took me down, yeah. Look at all this, look at it. Something worth being happy about. Uh, there is one more thing that I want to add really quick. Don't go. We're, not, we're still not done. One more thing. And I want to show you something. Um, here's, a, here's an easy, quick way to uh, check if I'm crushed. And we can set our image blend to be CY. Because we're not done with code yet. There's one more thing I want to tell you about 
that we don't necessarily have to do, but I want to tell you about it. So, um, so easy, uh, set our image blend to white, but if we're touching a wall at this point at the bottom here, then we'll set our color to blue. So this should tell us if we're getting like crushed by anything. We'll, we'll flash like a dark blue color for a second. Um, so like if I check up here and show you that we're not getting crushed while we're getting pushed down there, which is great. Um, and this should crush us. Yep. It did for like a second, you see. So, uh, can I get in between anything? Is there anything that can like crush me right now? Uh, not really. I don't have any good stuff set up, but basically, um, we're not necessarily trying to get crushed right now. We're trying not to get crushed, right? So there we go. So those two got pushed together, but we're seeing that I'm running on top of these and you can move on top of them and do everything you want to. And, uh, you're, you're not getting crushed. You know, you're not flashing blue, which means that by the end of the step event, our collisions have worked great. We can make moving platforms of like any complexity. Yeah, look at that. That's nice. Um, moving platforms of any complexity, you know, and uh, we're not going to end up in any weird situations. Oh, see, okay. So there was one little flash that seemed weird and seemed a little bit un, uh, undeserved in that in that crushing. Now, in like a Mario or a Sonic game, if you get crushed, you know, you die. To be very safe, you know, like crushed death code and you know like if you have hp or something or you have like a dying script or whatever you can say you know by this point if place meeting x y you know this would be dumb but you know instance destroy right you know so it's like i'm, I'm dead um if you were worried about those little moments you could do something like having a uh, crush timer right and that could be like set to zero and say crush death time and so how many frames do you need to be crushed for it to actually work three frames isn't too long as far as human perception goes three or four frames but uh as far as our system goes that's a very very safe number to be like okay if i'm touching a wall we'll add to that otherwise our crush time should be zero and then we can just say if uh sorry i messed that up crush timer so crush timer plus plus otherwise reset it and if our crush timer is greater than our uh crush death time then we can do the crush right so like there, there's an easy way around that where it's not so instant because uh even in like the early sonic the hedgehog games there are times where like you can just be playing that game and do something kind of weird and then suddenly sonic just dies and it's essentially for this reason um so that's a that's a good way that's a good way around it um but also i found in my testing and everything this is another one of those things where i don't know why i don't know why it worked you know i don't know why it did but again that's why i said this is important I noticed it had to do with my Y speed here. And my, as far as I can tell, my Y speed collisions seem great. You know, it seems like they make a lot of sense and they work. But I noticed that every now and then I could just get that one single little blue flash of being crushed. And most of the time, like it did in our video, it would happen at the very corner of like strangely moving, moving platforms. And honestly, I found if I just did one last one of these. So like if there's not a place meeting of our X and our Y plus our Y speed with a solid wall, then uh, then you can add the Y speed, right? Like this is basic. Jesus, man. This is basically one final crude little collision check. The most basic kind of collision check you could ever do. And uh, I found in my project, in my demo project, that when after doing that, I feel like I never saw that blue flash when I shouldn't have. And I'm going to jump up on this one. I feel like it was triggered on this one or the one above it. So I'm just going to keep jumping around and jumping into the corners of these things and seeing. Um, this is what I've been doing for weeks, just, just running into stuff like this for like... 25 minutes at a time until I and being like, oh, it's finally done and then seeing the one flash and being like, oh my god so uh, but yeah, so I In doing that I I've noticed that it doesn't seem like there is a single instance of You know getting crushed like that which again because of the whole like you can use a timer and stuff like that It doesn't matter. You know if you get stuck in a wall for that single frame it, it generally actually doesn't do anything right the only time in our code that we have right now that the player will freeze up is if they are like encompassed by a wall uh, like this right here, right? Like that, like, yeah, that's, that's a crushed, that's a crushed player, but we don't even get like a flash there. We don't get um, crushed for a frame by going up there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good to me. Um, that was a good place to test a crush, but yeah, I mean, I, yep. Oh, yeah. See, there we go. And uh, there's a there's a couple things like that. You saw like there was like a little bit of a warp 
that happened. That was funny. A little bit of a warp that happened there. Um, that kind of just happens with using our precise collisions. You know, we're using those while loops to get the player in and out of objects and stuff like that. But um, I very, very rarely see that happen. And uh, that only happens after the player has been like basically fully encompassed by some kind of wall, right? Which my point being is uh, you're in your game, you should not let your player get crushed like that, or you should punish them immediately for it, uh, normally by a death or something like that, right? Like, and if you don't want that to be the case, you shouldn't let your solid moving platforms touch other solid walls like that. You shouldn't let the space be created to do that unless it's the purpose of making them a hazard that can crush the player and give them an instant game over in a Mario game or something like that, right? You shouldn't do that. Our system, I think, is pretty good right now to where our player very rarely freaks out under that circumstance, but um, you know that circumstance shouldn't happen in your game. And I, I would kind of say that by all means, that shouldn't happen. Um, maybe if it does happen, one of the objects or both of the objects that you're colliding with should have their collision turned off or you know get ignored like a semi-solid platform until the player doesn't touch anymore, something like that. But you have to do something. You can't just let your player be collided with those things like that. Um, and that's the point, and that's why I've been so touchy about this, is I really just wanted to avoid that possibility at all. So far as I'm aware, this works basically completely perfectly, uh, even with these weirdo moving platforms, you know, the non-digital, non-linear, like the weird circular ones, and you could even make them be jittery and weird and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, uh, that's that, I believe. And yeah, well, how do you feel? Feel good about yourself? Hmm, you should. Even though I'm talking like this, you probably should. I was wrong about last time. I'm actually more proud of you now than I was last time, which is crazy. Maybe it's just because it's a different day. Or maybe it's because you deserve it. We're doing crouching mechanics next time. Don't skip it. It's very easy compared to all the stuff you just did. Like I said, pretty much every platformer ever has some kind of crouching in it, regardless of if it's actually useful or not. But you can learn a very good principle from it. So don't skip it. Don't just stop here. But yeah, again, I said this last couple episodes and I'll say it in the next one again. Look at that. Look at that view count on this video. All right, and then pause and go back to the first video again. Look at that view count. Be proud of that. Be proud that you're here. Be proud of your game. Be proud of me. Oh, thank you. But yeah, I won't take more of your time on this episode. Please check out StarCross Starcade Special. Please check out the Patreon. And please have a good freaking day, pal. Now let's hear from our Star Gamers. The heroes of this series, by the way. Well, you all are. You're all heroes. I don't like playing favorites. But I will say these people deserve a very, very big thank you. And that is Nixionic, Null, Caden Brightwell, Joseph Sandlin, Midnight, Aogio, Christian Donovan, Jazzy, DT, Richard DeLuca, Arya Sparks, Maya, Robel, Crazy Poo Chucker, Harrison, Joshua, Ruben Leavell, Moody, Mikel Alexander, David Rivas, NerdBoutique.com, Carlos Acosta, John Brown, Marco Romo, Howie, Sam Live, Andreas Premo, Bill Lati, Ayo Ayo, Amar Ali, Nick Lee, Matthew Carr, C, Mancat, Patrick, Yeskrit Brar, Dean Blackborough, Micah Smith, Matt Lumens, Jonah Newman, Finn Leavell, Peter Diaz, and BB Samurai. Thank you so much, everyone, and I hope to see you in the last episode. Uh, bye bye now. Mwah.